Hey everybody, Jonathan Mark Mendes, Painted Love, and welcome to my channel. Today I'm gonna to be working on this small bedside cabinet. Um, it is gonna be another decoupage project, but it is a first for me. This is a brand new product that I've been kindly sent as a PR product by Annie Sloan ahead of time. So I'm gonna to get to have some fun playing around with these brand new papers by um, Annie Sloan in collaboration with the RHS, which is full of botanical vibes, which is right up my street. So I'm quite excited to use it. I thought what I would do is take you on the journey as I go through the process of how I'm gonna use the paper. I'm not even gonna read the instructions. That is bad. You should always read the instructions. But I just thought I'd get a good feel for this paper because many of the papers that I've used are all slightly different. So. Let's take a look closely at the papers that Annie sent me and the cabinet. I have to say the packaging is absolutely gorgeous. Um, I've decided to do my project with this paper, which is mint. And I'm gonna open the, the packaging so you can see um, what the paper looks like inside um, on scale. Now, Annie has been really generous with these. Um, they're not quite A1, but not far off. And she's put two papers in. Um, so there's two of these. Two sheets. I'm only going to use one for the front of this cabinet because um, I'm just going to do the uh, the drawer front and the cupboard door, and I'm going to tie in. I'm going to do a pale background. I'm going to tie in some of the greens to the outside, and maybe chateau grey. I think. So first up with this cabinet, this is where I'm going to do the decoupage. I'm just going to do it on the cupboard door and the drawer. Lucky for me, this um, little cupboard comes out really easily, as does the door. So I'm gonna remove the door from its hinges um, by releasing the screws. So that's the cupboard door and the um, drawer removed from the main piece of furniture. What I have to do at this point is give them a coat of paint to receive our lovely mint um, decoupage paper. Now, I've been looking at this and it is perfect colours for my kitchen. I've been looking at my tiles, thinking what can I use this for in this space? And I've just pulled out of my props, um, Hall and I found this interesting sort of, I don't know what it is, it's made of fiberglass, it's like a plant pot. Um, and I thought, well, wouldn't this be wonderful as a, either a herb garden or a utensils pot? So I'm gonna try and decorate this at the same time as doing the little cupboard. There's enough paper to go across the two projects. So going back to background colors, I'm gonna be using white. This is a white background. Um, if you use a neutral that's got more color to it, you're gonna get some of that shining through. The paper's ever so thin. Um, so I would say always go for a lighter background, not unless you're intentionally wanting to bed in the pattern to the piece of furniture, if that makes sense. So on with painting, I've got an artistry brush and my large Annie brush, and I'm using old white. So any what way, I'm just gonna apply the paint. Probably two coats here.
So whilst we're waiting for the first coat of old white to dry on the cupboard front and the um, drawer front and also the pot, um, we are going to just paint the base coat of the whole carcass. And I've decided to go with the um, Chateau Grey because it's kind of a really good colour match. I'm sure Annie's matched the colours up to the papers to the paint. So I'm going to use Chateau Grey, but there's a whole lot of other colours in this one that you could use. There's even a colour that looks like fur inside there and the stalk on that piece is kind of got a readiness to it. So that could be another good combination of colours, but I'm kind of going for the pared down look. So let's get stuck in with um, some Chateau Grey. Olive might work as well on this one, but I'm going to go for the softer colours. Chateau Grey over the whole piece. So I'm now back on with the um, cupboard door and drawer. This is just a second coat of old white. Um, I think that'll be uh, sufficient to give grey coverage with the decoupage paper. Also, I'll give the pot another coat of old white as well. You might be wondering why I'm working from the kitchen. Now, um, the reason for this is we've had the Christmas decorations out and I've left my workshop a real hot mess with all of the storage containers. Plus the fact it's really, really cold and I don't have heating in the workshop. And when I started filming, you could see my breath, it was that cold. So I thought I'd work inside. Mr. M's not too keen on me working on the kitchen worktops, but hey ho, don't tell him. Um, so let's give this a good old coat. If you're new to Annie's Foam Paint, you'll notice that I actually did no prep work. And the beauty of Annie's Foam Chalk Paint is you will not need to. Many of you that already use Annie's Paint will know just how that works. It is magic. Um, and look at the coverage. This is the second coat, beautiful coverage. Um, the only prep work that is involved with chalk paint, and I always say the prep work comes at the end. That's when you give it the clear coat of wax or lacquer. Um, and that is it really. Notice as well that I'm not painting in straight lines. I'm using a method that Annie would call any what way and I'm using an Italian oval brush. Uh, this gets plenty of paint on and I'm adding the brush strokes. I want some texture into my paint. I'm not worrying too much about how 
the overall finish is. Okay, so crucial part, we're moving on to the placement of the decoupage paper. Now I always think this is worth taking a little bit of time dry fitting before you go straight ahead and stick on. Um, with this drawer uh, covered front, I don't know if you can see, there is like a faux tongue and groove panelling in here. So I'm going to play around with this mint paper to see where they fit with that panelling. Now I'm probably going to do it so it's even in the middle. There's two very prominent um, branches here and here of the mint and I'm just going to see how that fits in. I'm just going to feel for the grooves. Uh, there's one there, one there. Yeah, I think I'm just going to go for it. I'm also maybe going to add some dark wax afterwards to bring the grooves back into the detail. Now we're on with applying our decoupage to the cupboard front. I know that I've got everything balanced out with the pattern and the drawer front. Um, one thing that I did do was read Annie's instructions and it said use Annie Sloan decoupage medium, which is awesome. I've used it on different projects, but it's not the way that I usually apply this type of paper. So you're gonna have to wish me luck. I'm actually using um, Annie Sloan Matte Lacquer, which I've decanted into this fruit bowl. Um, the reason being, it's much thinner, I find it easier to apply, and I've always had great results with it. So give it a go, let me know how you get on. Um, I've also got um, some palm brushes, paddle palm brushes. Um, I've got, a, I'm gonna keep this one dry for smoothing out, and this one is gonna be um, my spreading, glue spreading one, or in this case, lacquer. That's the reason I've taken it out of the can because the brush will fit nice and easy and free so I can spread this around pretty quick. I've also got my atomizer, which will, if I feel like the paper is slightly too thick, I'm gonna spray it down on the underside. I don't know, let's just get stuck in and see what happens. So first up, I'm gonna pop the paper back. I know that's where I want to um, apply the paper. Um, and I'm just gonna add my lacquer straight across. Like I said, it's nice and thin. You wanna be working quick and making sure you get your, all, of the, all of the sides covered as well. So that's going on there. And then I'm just gonna line up again. Get this correctly lined up. That feels good around the edge. And then I can peel up this way. And then again, straight over. I'm gonna do this in one go. I feel like I just need to go for it. All of the sides. I don't know how much durability the paper's got yet, so we'll see. I think, I think it's pretty resilient. Let's give it a little mist. This is a trick that I like to use. Just a little mist, just to soften the paper. Straight down. Yeah, that's good. And then, I'm gonna use the dry brush just to smooth out. Working from the center outwards. Lift up there, spread out. Yeah, it's nice and resilient, this paper. A little bit there that needs to spread out. Lovely. I can feel that the paper is quite absorbent. So ordinarily I would go straight over the top with um, the lacquer at this point, but I'm not going to. I'm just gonna allow this to dry out um, before applying another coat to seal it down. I'm just gonna start working on the edges, going round all of the edges, pushing everything in. If I need to use the brush just to pop that in, I will do. That's lovely. Maybe a little bit more of the lacquer just along the edge, leading edge. Straight down. And then we can Lovely. Pop 
that one down. Same again here. Apply a little bit more lacquer just to there. I would probably say if you're not used to using your atomizer with decoupage, um, maybe try it just without on your first attempt. Um, I can feel that this paper is quite absorbent, which is a good thing because what you want the paper to do, once you've got the top coat of, um, if it's decoupage glue or it's the um, lacquer, you want it to infuse all the way through. So you want it to be, um, so it meets each other and the paper kind of sinks into one another, if that makes sense. I'm gonna spread that on that corner, that feels great. And then we'll just do this final edge and then we can tidy it once it's dried. You've got to work quick because chalk paint is very absorbent. So in its own right, it's got an absorbency. So you have to, there we go guys. That's how absorbent it is. Let me just show you. I do make mistakes. There's a little bit of a pucker there. I've got to be careful with this now and try and fix that out. Yeah, that's it. Just gonna tap that in. Luckily for me, it's on the edge, hidden away inside the drawer. I'm just gonna not overwork it. Like so, that's it. I'm not gonna overwork any of this paper now because I know by the feel it is very, very absorbent. I've got another little anomaly there, so I'm gonna have to be really, really careful just to spread that back out. So now we're gonna move on to the drawer front. Now it's crucial that I get the pattern to line up. So what I've got is, here's the second part of the paper and I'm just marrying by folding the paper in a roundabout way to know where the pattern goes. I know that there's gonna be a gap between the drawer and that kind of carries on beautifully. Also, I'm just gonna pop my nail on each end where it ends so then I can take, take that over, fold it, same at the other end, wherever that mark was, there, that feels about right. And then, then I know exactly where the pattern continues. So that feels good. I know when I pop this paper on here, although I've got lots of overhang, I know that I can line it up to those marks and then the pattern should continue perfectly along. So let's move on by popping this to one side and giving the, the drawer front a quick blast. I am not gonna use the atomizer. Maybe if you're using um, the decoupage medium, if you wanna give a, a spritz just over that, but if you're a newbie to this, I wouldn't bother. Just go straight on with your um, lacquer, which I'm gonna do again here. So a healthy coat of lacquer, it's much more runnier lacquer, so it kind of flows a little bit quicker and it doesn't um, absorb as quick into the chalk paint. So that's why I like to use it. So on with the next um, piece of paper and I'm gonna line up all my uh, corners and edges. There we go, straight up into that corner, on, straight down. And it's kind of one of those one, one time only things where you just kind of, again, spread outwardly, straight on. That's gone on beautifully. And then I will go back and do all of the edges the same way. That edge is good because it's only a thin lift, but just underneath here, lift up again. Plenty of lacquer there, straight down. We will tidy up all of the rough edges afterwards. Oh, there you go, that's how absorbent it is. It's already, I'm gonna keep on going with that because that's fine, it's underneath the drawer. Get rid of that. There we go. That's it, a little bit less to work with. I told you there might be a few things that go, not wrong, but anomalies that happen along the way that I wouldn't have known about until I started using this. So this paper is very absorbent. Um, that's what I'm learning and I like it. I do like absorbent paper because I know once I put my top coat over the top, it's gonna be joined together nicely. So let's get on with 
There's only thin lip there, so I don't need to worry about that so much. Back in here on that side and down. And then just the top of the drawer, I will need more paper here, so I'm just gonna let this overhang. Of course, there is different methods of applying decoupage. You can do the iron-on method, which I think I've done somewhere on my channel as well. But really, that's gorgeous. I love it. And I'm just gonna leave these corners pushed in until it dries, and then I'll come back and tidy them up. Okay, so it's had some drying time. It's just about dry, I think, all the way through. You can slightly hear it, the paper goes crunchy. Um, and now that I'm gonna give, I'm gonna leave the edges on still, I'm gonna tidy up them afterwards, but we're gonna give it another coat of the lacquer over the top, a healthy coat, just to seal everything down. Also, I'm pushing into those grooves to try and bring back those um, tongue and grooved marks so I can add some dark wax afterwards. I'm gonna age this. I want it to be sort of more vintagey looking. Spreading nice and evenly. Not to overwork again. Leave that to one side. That's all that's left to do on that. Full draw front. Again, we'll leave to dry. Moving on to the surplus um, paper, all I'm gonna use is a sanding block just to kind of rub away the edges. This will basically give you a nice clean, clean line to remove any surplus paper and glue. I will go back and tidy all of this up afterwards once I paint inside the cupboard. But that's how you take off all of the paper around the edges. Another side here. One thing I have learnt regarding these papers is they are very thin once they've got moisture on them. I would say probably first time use, use your decoupage medium. Um, I've been able to handle it really well with the um, lacquer. Um, Rice papers work really wonderful with lacquer, so um, have a practice run. The other thing that I've ended up with, with my project is this wood. I don't know what wood it is, it's really lightweight, um, but what I've ended up with is bleed through. I had no bleed through with the, um, with the paint. Once the um, lacquer had gone on, and the paper, for some reason, it's given me this sort of, kind of a, a warmish, creamy finish. Not to worry, as you go through the process, there's always ways of fixing these things. And I'm gonna be adding dark wax to these little grooves anyway, so lots of dark wax over this is gonna give it that more aged feel, which I like. So whenever I come across an anomaly like that, it's just fix it along the way. And let's do the draw. Um, Take this bit of paper off the drawer. Most of the paper on this one came off as I was applying. Um, that's it. There's a few little wonky bumpy bits there, but that's it. I'm happy with that. Let's remove that paper. And then once this 
gets its coat of dark wax and the handles back. It should look really lovely. So all of the lacquer on the front of the cupboard door is well and truly dry. A really good finish actually. It's gone down nice and smooth. A little bit of a sheen there. As you can see, as I mentioned earlier on, there is a little bit of bleed through through that, which is a little bit disappointing. My fault for not um, testing the wood prior to this, um, but I'm not gonna let that defeat me. I'm just gonna add dark wax and kind of blend everything away the, to the drawer front and the cupboard door. So I will be using clear wax. I've got my clear wax here and my brush. Just uh, another coat over the top because it helps me um, be able to control where the dark wax goes uh, and how much I pop on. So a little bit of a healthy coat of clear wax. What I would say guys is if you're using Annie's paper like me for the first time again, give it a little trial run on a board. I always say that. This is my trial run. Um, and yes, there were a few anomalies. I was, I was quite surprised to um, work out how absorbent the paper is. It's a little bit like going back old school for me, back to uh, napkin decoupage. You might even want to use some cling wrap, cling film as a barrier so you don't put your fingers through because it becomes really delicate when it's wet. And again, maybe your um, glue choice. Now I've used um, lacquer and I really like lacquer. It's just one of the things that I am comfortable using. Um, but don't forget, there's the decoupage medium. This is what the tutorial was all about, kind of learning with me. Um, I want to give you all of the options, I suppose. Right, some dark wax over the top of this. Loading up the brush. I'm going to go heavy with this, really heavy, and I want to put it into all of the, the crevices to fill in those tongue and groove crevices. Um, and it will end up being a cream background rather than a pure white background, which is fine. Um, that works for me. Like I said, it's going to hide all of the things that I didn't want to see. So as you can see, really heavy. I've gone really heavy over the whole thing and I'm gonna take it off with my cloth this way so it stays in those grooves. Fold up my cloth and then we're just gonna keep on working this this way. Let me go that way around. Cut over here so you can see better. Oh, it's like old wood. You can see the grain of my brush strokes through. I love it. Maybe just top up a bit there. show you how we're looking. See it's just pared it down, it's still kind of a little bit wood grainy from my brush underneath. I really love that. I'm going to do the same to the drawer front now. Yeah that's really lovely. Alright, we'll go oh, a little bit of wax brush. This is the clear again. Find, oh, we've got a clean cloth there. Just take a little bit of that off. And then, nice and heavy. the 
two together. Gorgeous, absolutely beautiful. So you can see how much difference the colour is between the pot, which I'm going to keep crisp and light, and the drawer fronts. So that's just about it for today's tutorial. I'm gonna reattach the door and place the drawer back in to position. Also, I'm gonna go with the original hardware because look at how wonderful that sits. This bronzy color sits with the gorgeous dark wax over the mint paper. And what have I learned from using Annie's paper today? Well, number one, I wouldn't use the atomizer like I did. Um, definitely go for lacquer for a gluing medium. It does work, but I would work your way up to that. Start with the decoupage medium first. Um, you do get a really lovely finish. If you can see that in the light, you get a wonderful seamless finish with lacquer, and I really like using it that way, but it's not for the faint hearted, so just be careful. Um, but yeah, let's get this all back together. I've really enjoyed it. Thank you, Annie, for such a great product.